Hello, everyone. Hi, everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I'm back to do some more unraveling. Hopefully, everyone has been able to find their way here. Um, <laughs> I just saw, oh, sorry, it's sort of a, the internet can totally see you now <laughs> that popped up. Um, I'm back to unravel some more blanks. We did a couple hours this morning, I took a little break for lunch, and now I'm back with part two of the Unravel-a-thon. And hey, I finally found that the static link is working. So um, actually, that's a good, good one for when I am going to be doing a live stream, popping off and popping back on. But hopefully, people are able to find this and you guys are able to join me again. So um, yeah. <laughs> I don't think anyone is on right now though. So, aha, I see, now I see the people starting to come in. Awesome. I think that there's a bit of a delay and so that that adjusts the way things work. But welcome, welcome, and we're gonna, yes, I am live right now. Yeah, I wish I still had the chat. Maybe I can get the chat for the other video so I can share this link. Um, so if, if one of, let me see, because <laughs> now I know, oh, you got a notification and you saw it on my Facebook post. Oh, awesome. Yep. Here I am. Here I am. Um, I think that there's just a little bit of a delay. Let's see. Sharing this. I'm seeing if I can access the old chat which probably not but um just in case so hang in there <laughs> um yes that's where i'm live now <laughs> but hopefully everyone is able to migrate um, yeah, I am really excited that I found how, um, okay, no, I can't reaccess the chat from the last one. And I'm really, really excited that I figured out how to get the static URL to work. So that way, um, there's a few different like ways to set up a stream, but now I know if I'm doing a stream through this particular window, um, if you get the, the URL, um, that I'm just posting in, which funny, um, that it's, it's a static URL. So that way I can say, oh, come back here. And when I come live again, that's where it'll show up. So that, that's great. Um, yeah, welcome, welcome back everyone. Um, after that, you know, just sort of getting everything set up again. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I'm here to continue our Unravel-a-thon. This morning, we unraveled six different blanks from last week's Soft Blank Special 2. And I'm going to continue unraveling some of these commercial knit flicks blanks, homemade blanks, and crochet blanks. If you're unfamiliar with why we would bother dyeing blanks, um, ooh, I hope that my quality, I think I, my quality just took a hit. Okay. Anyway, if you. The reason to make a knit or crochet piece of fabric to dye and unravel is that this allows you to do really long repeats of color, asymmetric colorways, random colorways, and there's a lot of possibility of things that you can do that would be really hard to do if you just started with a circular skein of yarn. Um, yes, Metal Fed, I just saw um, that I have an email from you through Ravelry, so I'm excited to go and take a closer look at all the blanks that you dyed. So we're unraveling these blanks onto some PVC pipe nitty knotties. Um, I have a video on the channel about how to make the PVC pipe nitty knotties and all of the live streams where I dyed all the soft blanks and recaps for four of the five live streams, but recaps for the live streams of all the ones I'm unraveling today are also on the channel. Um, and so what I am doing now, and I'll maybe help you guys see my lap, is I am adding so I only have four nitty knotties, which is a lot of nitty knotties, but I only have four. 
Um, so therefore, I'm adding some extra ties so that way when I take the yarns off the nitty knotties, so that way I can use it, um, it'll just protect the skeins a bit more. Normally, I like to wet my skeins and uh, while the yarn is on the nitty knotty, so that way, oh, I don't know, um, I guess that way the, the, the crimp from the, the crimps that we get from the, like the, the knit blanks effectively being blocked can be reduced. And so let me show you. Here you can see some of this crimping that we get. And where did, okay, there's that strand. I can add this one more tie around here. So I will need to soak these to relax help the crimp relax just so that way it's a little easier to store and you know because then it looks more like yarn like we're used to versus spaghetti or like crinkled spaghetti so it's still really pretty it's just um the the chances of tangling are higher when it is crimped like this so what i'm planning to do when I did while I was off camera is I took two of the skeins and I just put it in some water. And with the big O yarn base, that one, as soon as I placed it in the, the water, it relaxed. The 100% worsted weight wool, wool of the Andes yarn, that one still has a bit of a wave to it. So it's, I guess, kind of like that, where like it's mostly straight, but you can still have a hint of the wave. I did not soak it for very long. I only soaked it for a couple minutes before I hung it out and I did sort of shake it. Um, but that that's a yarn that maybe could have benefited from some kind of weight to help the crimp come out. So these are all just things to keep in mind as you are unraveling multiple blanks. So yeah, that's just something to to keep in mind and be aware of. Doo, 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 doo. Okay. As I'm adding, which you guys can't see, some more ties to this to free up some of these nitty knotties. Now, for in case you're new to the whole concept, oh. nope, that one I did not do well. I left a strand out. Um, if you're new to the concept of sock lengths, they usually come in two different varieties, either single-stranded or double-stranded. And the nice thing about a double-stranded blank, like the one that I have unraveled and that I'm tying up in my lap, is that when you, when you unravel the double-stranded blank, you get two identical skeins of yarn. So, and that's not something that you get with the single-stranded blanks. Um, because, you know, with two strands of yarn and you get when, if you're dying with ever, whatever gradient or random patterns, these two skeins of yarn will be identical, which is awesome. And so like I could dye two different blanks with this kind of gradient, but the gradients might start and stop in different places. And so if you wanted truly identical socks, uh, you want to have something, a double stranded blank that you're going to dye. So I'm going to go and set these aside. Um, yeah, I mean, normally I let things dry on the Nitty Naughty, but with 21 blanks from these live streams, I think I needed, you know, I needed something, something else. <laughs> and I almost knocked over the camera. I'm going to set these aside. I am going to unravel, I think, one of the ones that will probably be a bit harder for me to do in just a moment, but I figured, actually maybe I'll get started with that. Yeah, ramen noodles, thank you. That's what it looks like. So today, this afternoon, I think I wanna start off with two of my striped, striped blanks. So these are two striped blanks that I dyed in the stripes, stripes and more stripes live stream. And I use the same colors, but the techniques and the blanks themselves are obviously pretty different. This is a sing, but the yarn base is the same. They're both wool of the Andes worsted weight yarn. It's 100% Peruvian Highland wool from Knit Picks. Um, there are links in the video description, my affiliate links to the Stroll commercial blanks, 
Knit Picks Bear yarns and some of the other dyes and things that I used from the dyeing live streams, just in case you feel like picking some up to dye at home. So these are both 100% wool. One of these I made on a Singer knitting machine. It is a round, a skinny round blank. And I did the striping pattern with some diagonal stripes. This is similar to the rainbow blank that I unraveled in the last live stream, but we had more color penetration. So there's color all the way through, um, but there's some variation within the stripes because of the way the colors broke. And so that is really, really fun. This blank, so that's a single stranded blank back there. This one is a double stranded crochet blank that I painted in stripes. I think I used a size M or N crochet hook and then did a bunch of double crochet stitches. And when I was hand painting on the stripes, I tried to have one row, one full double crochet row, and then two partial double crochet stitches on either side. So that way we would get some semi-solid sections and then more variegated sections um, to give us hopefully a cool gradient. Um, but I think, I don't remember if I started with a center pull ball which will give us a lot of twists to unravel, or if I started with two 50 gram balls of yarn. So, yeah, so I don't know, but given that the ends are exact, I probably started with a center pull ball. So yeah, it'll probably get twisted, but we'll, we've dealt with that before. So welcome. So we will be able to just deal with that Again, the problem with using a center pull ball to make a double stranded blank is that it just gets a little messy um, because the two strands of yarn twist around each other and it takes more effort to unravel. Now I need one other, is that one here? Ah, here's the other one. Um, so again, this is my PVC pipe Nitty Knotty. Normally when I use a Nitty Knotty, I have the two ends perpendicular to one another so I can wind a skein like this. But when I'm unraveling a double-stranded blank, I prefer to have it in more of this H configuration. So that way I can wind two four-foot skeins onto the Nitty Knotty at the same time. And I get started by inserting either stitch into like some of the ends within this T junction here. So that way, that, that just sort of helps to uh, to hold the ends in place. And I have a weighted clip that I'm going to add here just to give some, uh, to weigh down the blank a bit that will help me unravel it. But even in this little section where we started, you can see that we've got some variation in the tones. Now, I think that if we were to use a superwash yarn, the, the variation that we would get from the, the crochet stitches would be even greater, um, but it's a little more subtle. Well, it's not subtle necessarily here when we have these more variegated sections, but in general, since the colors take longer to strike to the, the wool of the Andes yarn, stripes end up being a bit softer. Um, so on this striped one, some of the lines are a little more distinct, but if you look at the whole blank over here, it almost looks oh, not quite ombre, but it has more of a gradient feel versus a striped feel because of the way the colors spread out. Welcome everyone. I'm glad that you guys were able to join me again. Um, yeah, as we continue on with our unraveling. This, this yarn I think is going to be awesome. I mean, already I like these deep deep brown, blues, and blacks, which unfortunately you can't, you'll really have to wait for the, the replay of the unraveling. So last week I had the sock length special and I did, oh goodness, I did five um, long live streams to dye all of these blanks and each one had a bit of a theme. I've currently released about half of the recaps for these live streams. So I released four four of the recaps where I show the finished dried blanks and talk about how we dyed it and some of the features of the, the blanks. Once I have unraveled all of the yarns, my plan is to do another overall recap where I will show maybe some pictures of the dyeing process, 
picture of the dry blank and then some pictures of the yarn unraveled. So that way there can just be a quick, quick visual, I'll probably set it to music versus narrating it of, you know, technique blank, the yarn that we got from it. And so I'm already going through the second color, but the color transitions are nice and subtle. I think that this is, crochet blanks take longer to make, but I think that it is totally worth the effort. And yeah, you can see that we're starting to transition more. Yes, these colors are beautiful. Um, yeah, I, I've been very curious about this. As soon as I made my first crochet blank, I was like, ooh, stripes. I mean, I made it and I wanted to dip dye and that blank that I dip dyed in Wilton's Violet is absolutely breathtaking. But as, also as soon as I saw it, I really wanted to do stripes. And so we do have some modeled colors because of the way the colors broke. I mean, with the this more pink blue section, you see a brighter blue on the wrong side, which you know will lead to variation, but because of the way crochet stitches sort of twist around each other, I knew that we had the possibility for some really soft stripes. Oh, because of my clip, that's why that didn't unravel. Um, the, yeah, and especially since I made sure to have the stripes sort of transition in the middle of a DC row, um, that also will kind of add more blending to the way that this comes together overall. So I think it'll be really, really fun. And then, you know, if you wanted to get that perfect pair of matched mittens, for some reason I always lead, like when I think of my identical stuff, I mean, I guess socks and mittens are a reasonable place for your mind to go when you're thinking about matching pieces. But I also think that it would be really fun to do something symmetrical with these yarns or you could do something long and then have a really, really long color repeat. There's no reason why you have to make two things. So there's just a lot that could be done. <laughs> but I do have some cool packages that are supposed to arrive today. I have a Knit Picks package waiting, but that one I won't open today. But if my Knit Crate, knit crate package arrives, that I'm really excited to open up because I don't know what's inside. So therefore I need to open it. So otherwise, I, if there's not a snow day tomorrow, I might come live during the day to do some more unraveling, but I won't, otherwise won't come on again tonight unless my knit plate arrives at a reasonable hour. And so then I can do that. Is this a two foot nitty knotty? Yes. Um, I, well, with this one, you see I have a coupler piece. So I basically connected two of my one foot nitty knotties. So that way, yeah, we could have this one. So ultimately the skeins should be the same size as the ones that I do, that as the one stranded ones, approximately. So, but yeah, making the, PVC pipe nitty knotties was really, really useful. And there's videos, and in the videos, I talk more about what all the pieces are actually called. But given, I must have done this blank from two different 50 gram skeins of yarn, um, balls of yarn, because otherwise I think I would be twisted and having to like hold it up for things to untwist already. But, you know, so this, I'm not sure if you would call this more of a self-striping yarn or a gradient yarn. But now you can really, really see that we are transitioning through colors. And it's just really, really pretty. Maybe it's much more of a gradient because since we've got these, um, so right now I'm in one of the more semi-solid sections, but yeah, very quickly, now what's being unraveled is the more variegated section because we were at a point where um, a transition between the two colors that I was painting and yeah, and I thought that it would just be a nice way for these stripes to paint in together. Oh, you're welcome. I think there's about a minute delay between, uh, what 
is happening in my living room and then what you guys see. So that's why I respond to things as soon as I see it in the chat, but it might take you a while to hear it. <laughs> and I guess I didn't talk much about my technique last time. So I sort of pinch my fingers just like you would do a long tail cast on and have it in between the two strands. And then I wind it around the center of the nitty knotty, but kind of keeping it separated. And this allows me to unravel the two skeins at once, but, and this is the, a nice way to keep it separated. But the reason why I keep pushing the yarn towards the outside is so that way we can see the gradient of the two skeins. So you wouldn't need to do that. You could just wrap around and around, but then some of the colors would be hidden on the inside and it would give you, um, it wouldn't give you as nice of a feel for what the yarn is. Oh no, it never popped up. I'm sorry, shy moment. I know that now, um, I now know that I can, I have a static URL. So if I'm gonna pop back on at an undefined time, I can set that up. But I've only been going for about 20 minutes. Uh, so you didn't miss very much. And this is the first, this is the double-stranded striped crochet blank that I made in the Stripes, Stripes, and More Stripes live stream. And I intentionally painted these stripes. So while there's repeats of color on it, there the repeats are not in a regular order because I wanted to create something that would be unique and yeah, non, non-repeating. But I'd say we're probably halfway through it so far. Um hee -hee. But, and thank you so much, everyone who gave me super chat contributions on the previous stream. Many of you have given me multiple super chat contributions on, on like multiple streams lately. And I just, I really appreciate all of your support. And I really like hanging out with you guys as I do these things. This is why I decided to save it for a live stream instead of do the unraveling while watching TV. Um, I think it's a bit more fun and even if you know people might not necessarily be interested in the replay you can go back and see oh goodness because when i do the final recap i'm going to organize the yarns based on where they were dyed not the order that i unraveled them in i'm sort of unraveling them in a random order based on what i feel like so yeah that's something to keep in mind uh Oh, it looks like Super Chats are available on unscheduled live streams. Oh, well, yes. The I mean, so, but I'm currently live versus being, what I don't know is if, because someone was asking if you could do it while I wasn't live. So, yes, I think Super Chats are available anytime I am live. But, yeah, it's just the, um, you know, I don't know if it can be done. I see the button shows up if you look at a live stream before I'm live. I just don't know if you can do that or how long the chats sort of remain. But this is a really, really cool yarn. Um, I don't think all of the different purples and stuff are showing up on the camera as well. But so you have leftover dye from last week. How long does it typically stay good for? Use Wilton gel colors mixed with half a cup of water. They would stay fine. Well, I think they would stay fine for a while. I mean, I wouldn't eat food coloring that you mixed yourself and left out for a while. But I mean, I've used weeks old dye to dye yarn and that wasn't a problem. So, I mean, I have dyes that I have saved from last week myself that I haven't used. So normally I try to use them within a couple of days, but that's mainly because I'm worried about containers leaking or my kids getting a hold of something and spilling it and creating a mess. So we love sitting here and hanging out with you while you knit and spin. Um, we understand these sock blanks cost money and you want to help see me dye them, keep seeing me dye them. Thank you. I, I, I appreciate that. I think it's been a while since I've done some live spinning. So once this is all done, that I've got some yarns that I dyed in Gosh, did I do the roving in a live stream? I have some roving that I dyed that I really want to spin. Where is it? 
huh, I don't remember where, I'm trying to think of where I put it. I've had everything so organized from the Kickstarter that I don't know where. Hmm. So right now the blank is on the ground. It's a little easier to have it on the ground when you're trying to unravel something. In general, I try to keep it on the couch so that way you can see it, but I'm just going with the flow since I'm nearing the end and the weighted clip is really, really helping me. But, ah, uh, what a difference using two, doing this without a center pull ball is. Um, this is just so pretty. Check it out. Ah, uh, you wanted to save the dyes for dying with your, dying with your son during spring break. Yeah, that, yeah, with Lucas's broken collarbone, we've had a lot of extra time, just the two of us but he hasn't wanted to dye. He hasn't been in the mood to dye any yarn. So and that happened during his February break. So poor kid. Um, otherwise, I mean, I haven't told him that I would, if he wanted to dye yarn, I would let him skip nap to dye some yarn with me. Cause these days when he takes a nap, uh, then he stays up really, really, really late. So it's to my, benefit to have him not sleep during rest time. Oh goodness, maybe the delay is even longer than a minute. Because <laughs> sometimes when something happens, I can tell from the chat, like where you guys are relative to where I am. So when I'm, when I'm winding, when I'm making my own blank and I'm winding 250 gram balls to start with, I have a scale. So the way I do this is I'll wind, um, uh, the whole skein of yarn, if it was in a skein form, into just a center pull ball. Then I will place a center pull ball onto my scale, which is just a kitchen scale that I use for yarn and for dyeing. I place the yarn on the kitchen scale and then start winding with my ball winder another center pull ball. And so then I can see the weight of the one that I'm, I mean, I weigh it before I start so I know what the halfway point is, but that has been working really well for me overall. Yeah, at least he's like, he's not in any discomfort. Well, he is in discomfort sometimes, I guess. He's, you can tell that he's still in some discomfort because he doesn't want to stop wearing, like he's very emotionally attached to his sling. But in general, like he's in way less pain than he was when he broke it, so. But even the, so I forget who was saying that, you know, they wanted something that was less modeled or speckled. And so we still have some modeling here because of the reds and blues breaking. But every, all of the modeling that is still present, very present here is way more subtle than in the superwash yarns. In the, in the superwash yarns, like, well, this one will have a lot of color variation because there's a lot of color variation across even ro every row that we can see now. But for example, this one, because the color penetration isn't even through the whole blank, we'll probably see some uh, dabbling and big specks when we unravel it, even though we have a striped pattern. Yes, I hope, I really hope that they take an x-ray tomorrow, not tomorrow, on Thursday, so we can see how he's healing. Um, yeah, if they, sometimes they, they give you a choice whether you want something done. And I'm like, I, I want to see. Well, he also really wants another picture of his bones. He brought it into school. The kids thought it was pretty cool. <laughs> but yeah, he's my, he's my trooper. Um, but he's gotten a lot of TV since he broke it. <laughs> That's really the only way to keep him still. So if anything, we're starting to struggle as we're trying to give him less, uh, <laughs> less television. Um, there we go. Let me, let's see. What side is that? That goes on that side. Okay. I will show this to you. But yeah, when I, when I wrap the, the yarn around, the, oh, actually, I guess I'll leave this one open for now. But here is, yeah, you really can't see the purples 
So when I'm looking at this, I see blue, brown, a like blue, uh, like a deep rose in this really nice gradient setup. Um, let me grab. Okay. Oh, here's my phone. I need to take pictures of these. Um, ooh, maybe I'll maybe I'll do that other. I'm gonna do this one next, but then maybe I'll do the other striped one now too. So I'm trying to get pictures for the recaps that I'm gonna do. There. And I wanted to do that before I put this tie on because you know I wanted it to like be flat <laughs> while I did it. But I did take a picture, so I'm not I'm not doing like I won't be doing recaps of each of these live streams side by side, but I did take a picture of all of the blanks that I unraveled in part one, and so that will become the video thumbnail. And I will do the same thing in like for this one as well. I'll sort of lay out before I start wetting them all the blanks that we unraveled. So that way, just visually, you might be able to get a sense of what's unraveled in what live stream. Um, oh yeah, I mean, no, he loves books. He'll spend a lot of, Lucas will spend a lot of time playing and stuff by himself. It's just the, he really likes, likes some, some of his shows. And so he'll even play and stuff while he watches them. But uh, yeah, during, during rest time, he, he likes to read books in his bed sometimes. <laughs> I know, I'm the reason why I did, and I guess um, Marie said she was really excited, and I know that she's uh, watched a bunch of these streams and stuff, but the reason why I dyed this striped pattern back here, um, even though I did a similar kind of pattern in the Sock Blank Special 1, is that um, and now we'll see some of the crimping come out. Do, do, do. Our, okay, here is the end. The reason, the reason why I did that striping pattern, again, is that I really wanted to unravel one myself because the last one I sent off intact. But this is the, the DNA blank that I did in the stamping and stenciling. And I'm gonna set it aside. So all of these blanks, I will soak in some water to try to help the cramps relax as much as possible. It's possible also that for some of the, like the wool of the end, the, the teal gradient that I did, that one is, you know, it still has some wave to it, um, but it shouldn't make a huge difference when you're knitting. And if you block whatever you're knitting, um, it should be fine. But the, I'm trying to remember. Oh, but once I twist them and start them in skein form, that also might help um, things relax. But probably what would have helped the most would have been if I had put a weight of some kind on it. But since I wanted to come live again, I didn't want to spend too much time rigging up a drying system. So I wanted to get back to it as fast as possible. <laughs> well, thank you for watching. I greatly appreciate it. Okay, so this one is also Wool of the Andes, 100% wool, um, but it is a single-stranded blank. So, in theory, when things don't... Oh, goodness me. One of the stitches sort of knotted around it. I should be able to get this out without too much of an issue. Hopefully. Mm hmm Goodness me. Oh, had I not finished? Uh, bummer. Okay. Um, I think what happened was, so you know how I draw the yarn through my stitches? I hadn't finished. This had drawn through some of the below stitches a bit. So there we go. Now we should be unraveling fine. So this one should give us a striped gradient as well, but I think it'll look pretty different to the, even though it's the same colors, it should feel very different from the last one that we did. 
So for example, there's a little less modeling straight off the bat to the colors. And in part because I think there's a bit more resist in the crochet fabric than the knit fabric. So there's that. But it's a lot faster. Unless I make a mistake, it's a lot faster to unravel one of these single stranded planks. But again, I did the diagonal because I wanted there to be some variation in between the, the colorways. So here in this section, it's both brown and blue versus just transitioning to just the brown. So that way, if you were to say, make a hat or something with this, it wouldn't give us sharp stripes. The even if like the the very the variation on um, the variegated sections are really small relative to the other sections it'll give sort of more of a subtle transition between the colors while still giving us stripes oh thank you well it means a lot to me that you guys enjoy these videos that's why i keep making them and keep popping on live makes it very, very fun. Okay, so we're on our fourth color maybe, but you can see. I'm not sure, I guess there's, I didn't count the number of stripes that there were on this blank that I'm unraveling now versus the crochet blank um, to think about that comparison. I can go back and look at the pictures though to do it. And a couple of these colors ended up in that really brightly striped piece behind me. Whew. I don't think I'm gonna go quite as long this afternoon as I did this morning. My arm wasn't sore then, but it's starting to wear out a little bit. Um, I'm gonna take a brief break. So what's funny is because of the two cameras, I look a little disembodied. <laughs> Oh my goodness. But yeah, I think that mm, excuse me, these blanks are a lot of fun. So I really appreciate. Thank you. I really appreciate everyone tuning in and sticking with me for a second live stream of the day. And I think that the first one hasn't even finished processing yet. So you can't even People can't even watch that replay necessarily. Oh, but it's so fun to transition the colors. Yeah, and in some places where I was trying to do these transitions, since the colors didn't bind, I pre-soaked the yarn in vinegar before I dyed it. But since it's just 100% non superwash yarn, the, the colors bind a little slower, so they move around a bit. And so the, the color transitions, excuse me, are not super sharp on here anyway. You're new to the world of dyeing, knitting, etc. You're hoping to learn to knit soon? Oh, awesome! Um, oh, cool. Oh, quilting is something that I'm trying to get into. Um, oh, I'm, I'm glad. Thank you for calling me an inspiration. That is a huge compliment. Thank you. Um, I am very, very happy to inspire and your, all the feedback from all of you and the encouragement from all of you really, um, inspires me and encourages me to push myself and to try things that, I mean, I think this yarn is, these yarns that I'm, the, this one and the last one that I just unraveled. Um, are gorgeous and I love them and I would be really excited to knit with them. I don't think I would have tried to dye them if I wasn't trying to push and try different techniques to share. Same thing with all the homemade blanks. I purchased, I purchased a 20 pack of the Stroll blanks for the sock blank special, which was, whoo, that was an investment. And I think I went through about half of them. But then the other half were these homemade blanks. And I don't know if I would have done so many homemade blanks if I didn't know that most of you were making your own blanks at home. 
So therefore, it's worth seeing how easy it is ultimately to make your own blank and unravel your homemade blanks. And it can be just as easy as the commercial blanks. Um, the, what was I gonna say? Um, can be just as easy as the commercial blanks. And, oh, but also when I do troubleshoot with something with making my own blank, I can share that with you. And we can all learn from my mistakes. Now, when winding along this nitty knotty, I don't get my gradient isn't as clean as I get when I'm doing the two, two strands at a time. So you can get the sense that it's a self-striping yarn, but the, the whole gradient isn't quite as clear just because in some places the yarns go over other ones and things like that, but it's still very, very lovely. That's why if, well not if, when I do a de-stash sale and if any of these yarns end up as part of the de-stash sale, I will have a picture of the blank in addition to a picture of the yarn. Well, that's sort of a gray, that's pretty. That way you can get a real true sense of what things look like. Oh, you got notified through email that it came up? Oh, awesome. Oh, oh, you got notified through email that the replay is up? Oh, funny. Um, yeah, I, it's funny. I have all my YouTube emails filtered um, into another file that I don't read that often, so I could miss notifications. But oh, we're nearing the end. Yeah, these single-stranded ones can be really, really fast. And I know some people will uh, unravel their blanks and stuff onto a yarn swift um, and sort of spin it around. I think that it's all a matter of preference. My swift feels more delicate, so I haven't ever tried that. But yeah, I think that, you know, and some people had some suggestions like using, I have a yarn bowl that has two, that has some holes in it. And so I thought about trying that to maybe unravel, make the unraveling a bit easier but it ended up not working as well as I would have liked. So that is that. Oh, funny. Uh, nearing the end. I'm only going slow because I'm trying to like in one spot preserve the gradient because, oh, I guess you can kind of see down there. Fine. I was like, I need the best places to take the pictures. So that way I can show, I mean, I'll show things twisted up into the like twisted hanks, but I want to be able to show what everything looks like before and after. And so, cause I know, whoop. I know that people want to know and I want to help and provide up. I have a knot. I do not like leaving knots behind. There we go. I'm here. Okay, I think this is one of the good views of the striping. Here's another one that looks pretty good. But it's really, really pretty. Um, yeah, I need to, yeah. And so since, since this yarn has not relaxed yet, if it were, if I were just, um, you know, going to wet it on the Nitty Naughty, I probably wouldn't bother with the extra ties just because I don't normally bother with extra ties <laughs> just cause that's, that's kind of how, how I am, but, oh. Hey, birdies, you're going to move a little closer. Okay, so I'd love to hear what blank you'd like to see me unravel next as I'm taking the, the pictures. I guess I have three up here. They're all stroll blanks. I've got the, the random stamping, the stripes, and the birds. So those are the, the choices for the next step. <laughs> so let me know what you would like to see.
and oh, I can take one like this. Here we go. Cool. The rainbow. Oh, the birds. The rainbow one. Um. Ah. No, lack of consensus is hard, people. Let me pop up my head, but I'll move myself so that way you guys can still see the, the blanks that you are deciding between. All right, so we're definitely between the birds and the stripes. Ah, now the random stamping. You guys are wanting all of them. I mean, they will all be unraveled at some point, I promise. Um, but uh, I guess now is a good time to do a a brief um, a brief commercial break um, I will I will still be here and I appreciate you guys hanging out through it um, but yeah I guess now I need to just wait for my my signal <laughs> um, yeah so that way I can press the button um, because I think that if I don't wait for my little signal and then I just press the button then what happens is that it inserts the ad right where, like in time where I am versus where like you guys are with the live stream. I know that there is some DVR, but aha, now I can insert it. I, I know that there's some DVR, so you could be watching at a different point, but I want to, hopefully this is inserting for people who see the ad, it inserts the ad after I say I'm gonna insert it. So that's why I do it that way. And yeah, and I know that not everyone sees it, but um, I appreciate you guys sticking around through it as I take a break, break. But yeah, it's based on complex criteria. It depends on who sees what. So, oh, so before I, I pick, so here are the two well, maybe I'll do this up here. So here are the two that we've done on this live stream so far. And they actually look pretty similar. Um, I'm trying to figure out how I can hold them. There we go. Side by side. But they are done with the same colors. It's just here we have two identical skeins of yarn and here we don't. And this was crocheted. This was knit. So they would knit up differently even if I guess this is one way to show that even if two skeins look really similar, the colorways can be really different. So when someone shows a skein of yarn and is like, how could I make this? It's sometimes hard to know the order of the colors and, and excuse me, and things like that. So there's a lot that, that goes, that goes on. So, all right, let's, let's take a peek at the chat and see, uh, Rainbow stripes or rainbow. Um, you don't see the ads. You you learn that YouTubers. Um, I don't think I can comment on that aspect of the ads, Sarah. Um, so I think that if yeah, I mean not everyone sees an ad each time I I play it. Uh, okay, I think I'll do. I'm really excited to see how this one turns out. So I think I'll do the rainbow stripes. Um, which we've got, so in here, we've got orange, we've got pink, yellow, green, blue, violet, dark blues, coppers, um, a bunch of different teals. So there's really like a little bit of everything in here. Uh, and, oh, I need to clear off one of my mini knobbies. Oh. Because I'm, so I now have four nitty knobbies because I thought that that would be helpful. And I am adding extra ties. So that way, if the, because when you, when I tie the, just the ends of the yarn around while it's on the knitting knotty, it's hard to get it tight. So therefore it is very, very helpful to, um, okay, that's, and it's extra long. It's really helpful to just have it. Um, ooh, I did realize a little problem though. Hmm. So these are identical, except one of them has extra at one end. 
So therefore, if you were to start at the very end, oh, I'm not loving that. Um, that's a problem with homemade ones when the, the ends are not even. Ooh, maybe I'll need to do something about that. Mm. As much as I don't really want to necessarily clip it though. Ooh, because see this one has Oh dear. You can see I'm like not talking because I'm thinking. Hmm. Because I don't know. Oh dear. Because there was extra. I didn't think that through. Shoot. Well, I'll let that tie be extra long. I don't need to think about that. Oh, now I'm kind of bummed. Because that I was like, oh, you know, having a little extra, like, is totally fine. But, okay, and where did you go? There you are. Um, having a little extra is totally, totally fine. And now I'm like, oh, wait a minute. And that extra bit might be a little bit of a liability if you want to get a true matched set. So maybe I'll need to remember with this one that there's a bit of extra of the red. But anyway, um, this is our Swish DK. I mean, ultimately, the amount of extra is, uh, you know, like an extra 12 inches. So it's not like it's three extra yards but it is enough that it could throw off the balance. But ooh, these are bouncy. <laughs> um, you use my Dive Up weekly video playlist when you go to sleep. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, so I guess I shouldn't do too much shrieking then. Um, no, I'm glad, I'm glad that it can be uh, soothing and entertaining. I'm, I'm happy, happy to provide entertainment. Okay, ooh, my hip. I slipped on like a Lego or a plate about a year ago and I still have pain from that. But I'm, I'm glad that you guys enjoy and appreciate these videos, that, that means a lot. Okay, we are gonna unravel this, this rainbow wild striped blank. And which end? Uh huh. Sometimes, because we're in. <sighs> Let's try. Oh, because sometimes they have like the end and it goes through a stitch. So, okay. You can really unravel from either end, but sometimes it's a lot easier to start at one than the other. Ages. But yeah, see here, because like when you start with, the, maybe this is something that when I'm making my own, especially if I am going to be de-stashing them, you want to have an end that you know is the same starting place for both. So having things be, although wait a minute, maybe it's just the red end that's the extra because the other end should have been even. I don't think I would have had them be uneven on both. So it was even when I started, it was just the other end had some extra. Okay, so it's not uneven on both ends. It just happened to be uneven on the end where I started riding onto the Nitty Naughty. I just made myself feel a lot better about that. Because <laughs> I was all stressed. Okay, so with this, um, so here in the darker section, there is some modeling. Um, it's almost like there's tiny white specks because since we painted with the brush, there's more color than there is white. So any speckling that we'll feel will be white specks. Now in the last live stream, I wondered, ooh, 
But yeah, so this is cool because we will get specs because say in sections where, let me just share this. Like here, we've got green and yellow specs as, as we transition. So these colors, this is a stripy yarn, but the transitions, they're thin enough that we're not gonna have, it's not gonna be clean stripes. There's gonna be transitions. And so I think that this will turn into something that's a bit more of a gradient um, feel than a self-striping yarn. I mentioned earlier that I believe, and I can't say with 100% confidence, but I believe that on the stroll gradients, oh, that's cool, um, on the stroll gradients that Knit Picks offers, I think that they might be dyeing some of these blanks. Because um, one person complained about it not being solid all the way through the color. And so I was like, hmm, I've dyed these blanks. So, oh, cool. But I love just how fast these transitions are and that we are getting oh, this, this variation of these colors. That is just really, really cool. Don't stress about it. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I just want, I, I never want, especially if people are paying money for some yarn from me. Okay. So now we should get like a bigger striped section with, uh, just some maybe white modeling. If someone is paying me money for some of the yarn that I've dyed, I want to deliver with something that someone wants, you know, I don't want to disappoint anyone. Ev well, I don't want to disappoint anyone anyway, but especially if, uh, someone is paying me for something I never want to disappoint. But the best part about this is that we're getting these random stripes and random patterns, but it's identical. So because it's knit together, we're getting, you know, as we're unraveling it, you're seeing that we're getting the matched, like the pink purple transitions, and then we'll get these pink blue transitions that are happening in the same spots. So, which will look really, really cool when knit up. But the best part about these stroll blanks, I think, is just how easily they do knit up or how easy they are to unravel. So it would be non-stressful to try to unravel um, or to try to do like two socks at a time knitting from a blank. You probably, I mean, I block most of my projects anyway and I think you would definitely want to block something that you were knitting from really cramped yarn. But I think that, you know, it would be not difficult to do. Oh, you guys are the best. So it's funny, I'm not much of a yellow person, but yellow has been making me really happy lately. And I think I'm just enjoying the, the springtime aspect of all of it, but so, so far, funny, on the, the zoom out, there are, you know, there are a lot of specs from the way that the colors mix together, but we also do have some sections that are rather solid. There's a tiny bit of breaking with the purple, um, and there's a tiny bit of white from like the edges and stuff, but it is, this is more, this has less speckling than say the rainbow speckled where we had really, really shallow penetration of color and we only had uh, color on one side of the fabric versus the other. On this blank, which I guess, I mean, I show the wrong side in the recap. On, on this blank, we have more, like you can get nice, like right now I've got some more solid pieces of the teal. And so it is possible to get that through hand painting if you make sure that you have good color penetration through, through the blank. So yeah, this is, this one is really, really special. I love how something like painting something as basic as stripes could lead to getting an amazing variegated gradient of color. Now, the wider stripes, I, these stripes are only each a couple rows thick. If you were to paint, say, you know, stripes that were two inches wide, you would have more solid sections in the middle and less of these variegated sections. But when it comes to hand painting a blank, you're never going to get um, 
pure stripes. You're not going to get the sharp transition because there's always going to be one row that has some stitches that have some of two colors. That is the nature of the blank and why it is really fun to take advantage of the color transitions. but I think that this would turn into the happiest pair of socks on the planet. Uh, and so you noticed, and I know people commented during the live stream that it was fun to watch because it gives you a sense of the actual amount of time that it takes me to do something. And in terms of the stripes, hand painting stripes does take longer than some of these other techniques. Like I think spray painting might've been one of the fastest techniques Kettle dyeing is one of the lowest, like it takes, it can take a while, but you don't need to, it doesn't require a lot of focus. You can kind of set it and like walk away for during steps and stuff. But the hand painting of stripes does take a while. Um, just, I mean, hand painting almost anything takes a little while. So that's just something to I guess keep in mind when you're planning out your, your project. But if you have time and with a lot of people potentially getting some really good snow days this week, it could, you know, be a fun thing, fun thing to do if you're stuck at home. So, but the best part of this is that, I mean, I think that I would be enjoying this even if this were a single stranded blank. Um, let's see if I can get real close. So we've got all these color transitions. And there definitely are, again, some solid spots. Not everything is super modeled. But I think, you know, we have like a, oh, you can't see it. There we go. We have a bigger yellow section coming up, which should be pretty solid. Uh, but I think that, you know, if you're going to do this on a single stranded blank, I would love to keep stripes about the same size and keep my pat hand painting pattern totally random. And then I'd love to make, um, Knit Picks doesn't sell single stranded sock yarn blanks, but Will to Die For does, um, and some other companies do as well. I have some links to that in the uh, first blog post that I wrote about the sock blank special. So, yeah, I think that with a single stranded blank, you could paint, you know, random happy stripes. And so then if you were going to make socks out of it, you would get coordinated because they'd have some of the same tones, but they would not be identical and you wouldn't be trying to make them identical. And so that would be really, really fun. Yes, it would make happy, happy, happy socks. I'm gonna move my scissors away. Yeah, so here, and now I'm starting to get some of this orange in, but I just had a few wraps, so a few yards that were this solid yellow before I started picking up some other color in it again. So, and it's hard to get a full sense of the gradient because the, when I'm wrapping the yarn is like not as multiple layers thick. So, uh, yeah, but it, it took a lot of control to not just paint colors in, rain, in the rainbow order over and over, because I think that in addition to breaking violet, rainbows are my next favorite thing to dye. Um, so I did have accidentally a rainbow show up in the center, but I do have to actively resist hand painting rainbows sometimes. Now I try to find I tried to find some plastic shower hooks at the the dollar store the other week, but they didn't seem to have any. I think that if you wanted to, when you wet and try to weigh down skeins that you aren't keeping on the nitty noddies, then I would use uh, what would I use? I would use. Sorry, I'm blanking for a minute. Um, oh, plastic hangers. You could use those and then have. Like if you have the skein of yarn hanging over a bar, you could kind of have both ends through a hanger together and then even do multiple hangers if you needed to, to help weigh it down. Now there are specific weights that you could buy, I think, but I don't think that that's necessary for this. Where do I find my inspiration? 
Um, goodness, I think a lot of my inspiration comes honestly from all of you. Um, I get a lot of questions, a lot of questions, and they're things that I therefore do that I never thought I would try. But when enough people ask me to dye yarn with avocado, I think, well, gee, this is something that people want to see. I should make a video of that. And so now there is a dyeing yarn with avocado video in waiting to be published in the Dye Pot Weekly queue because I spent an afternoon or about a day, I guess, playing around with that. So I get a lot of inspiration from the questions that I'm asked. I also get inspiration as I do a yarn dyeing project. Sometimes I will, I'll try something like the, the Dye Pot Weekly 14 where I did the spray painting and random squiggles. I was like, and then when I unraveled it, I got these specs. I didn't know that would happen. And so that made me think, well, what if I was just to spray paint all over one layer and unravel it? What would I get then? And so then, you know, and so it's just sometimes I do something and I want to tweak it slightly to see what happens. And sometimes these little tweaks end up causing something really, really beautiful to happen. I mean, they all end up pretty, but sometimes the results are just sort of exciting. And that makes me want to try it again and see if I vary it a little bit, if I get any different results. And so um, that's sort of what happens. Like the, the Halloween candy, that one, because someone had asked, because I did the soda series. Um, when I was promoting the, my Kickstarter campaign, I went and I picked up you know, Gatorade and a bunch of different sodas to dye yarn, just to make have some videos coming out. And it was a lot of fun, but then people started asking about different kinds of candy. And I was like, oh, it sounds like a mess. I don't want to do it. But it had me thinking. And so after Halloween, I had this bowl of candy and I didn't want to eat it all. So I was like, all right, let's try it out. Let's see what we get. And the results were cool. I mean, it was a little messy to clean up, but it was still really cool. And so therefore, you know, it was worth exploring again. And so that's why I thought to get the, the candy hearts. I was like, oh, should I do another candy dyeing? I, you know, when I was doing it, I said I probably wouldn't ever do it again. But then a lot of people were watching it. And so then I'm like, well, maybe if people are really curious about that, then I should try again and see what I get. So that that's kind of how thing, things work. I do have a running list of all of the requests that I get. Um, so that way, if I am in need of some inspiration for a project, I have somewhere to look. But right now I have the problem where I have a lot of ideas that I want to do right away and I just don't have the time. Um, <laughs> and so that's why I like originally when I was setting up the whole Dye Pot Weekly thing, I was like, okay, let's do weekly videos. I think I can manage that. But weekly didn't, all of a sudden didn't feel fast enough. So therefore I was like, okay, I'll do bonus videos on Friday or some weeks Dye Pot Weekly comes out twice in a week. And then I started doing live streams. So it's just, there's a lot of stuff that, I have a lot of ideas that I want to share. And so I guess we'd run into problems when I run out of ideas, but there's always another fiber type or another technique to try. And so, yeah, I think that I, I'm not in danger of running out of dyes anytime soon because so on the list that had like a hundred ideas, one of the ideas was dye yarn with Jacquard acid dyes. Now, I mean, that was one thing on the list. So obviously there's like cake dyeing, different fiber types, using these techniques I've done with food coloring, trying them again with the acid dyes and seeing, do I observe anything differently? Um, I'm excited to mix the commercial acid dyes with the food coloring. I mean, food coloring is an acid dye, so it's not really fair for me to like, kind of indicate that it's not, but uh, it just happens to be food safe. That's the, the difference. You really love when I die with my kids. It makes you happy. Oh, thank you. It makes me happy too. Um, I know, I know some people are a little mixed when I die, when Lucas shows up because some people really enjoy seeing the kids do it. And some people prefer, don't enjoy the tone of the videos, um, which, which is fine. I mean, like some people really want to see the natural dying and some people don't care about it. And so there's always something I try to do a, mix things up and do a little something for everyone as best I can. It's not always possible to have something that makes everybody happy, but uh, when I did, I did a survey of the Kickstarter backers to figure out what kind of fiber types they wanted to see and kinds of projects. 
And basically the answer was a little bit of everything. I mean, there were some things some people didn't want to see, but they're, except for, for t-shirts. <laughs> I, I have some tie-dye t-shirt videos, which have a lot of views. Um, but I think my audience for those is different from my audience of the people that hang out with me on these live streams. So, uh, yeah, it's just, you know, different audience. So it's fun. Uh, yeah, the candy lamb yarn was really, really pretty, but yeah, so I have, I, and ever since the Kickstarter, I've had some people who missed out on it, who want to know how to support me and who want to maybe back something and get some of my yarn. I do plan to do a de stash sale at some point um, this, you know, within the next, I would like to say the next weeks, but probably like the next couple of months. It might take me a while to get things set up. And I now have a lot of, of yarn <laughs> to de stash. Uh, but I also might set up a Patreon at some point. Um, but the other way that people can support me more immediately, there are two ways. I sell some of my knitting designs through Ravelry. I'm Chemnitz blog on Ravelry, but you can also find the patterns on my website, chemnitz.com. They're along the, the side panel. Um, and then also when I do these live streams, you can do something called a super chat. And so under the, the chat bar, there's a little dollar sign. And many of you contributed in this morning's live stream. And thank you, thank you. But that's just another way that if you feel so inclined to give like a little tip for, you know, contribute to the materials and stuff, that's always appreciated, but not necessary. I like being able to have these videos up for free so that way anyone and everyone can watch them. Um, and that's why I guess I really, really appreciate, um, you know, subscribing to my channel and commenting on videos and watching the videos. This is all stuff that supports and helps as well because I do get, you know, ad revenue. But unfortunately, the reason why I'm like leaning towards Patreon and stuff is ad revenue. My viewership keeps going up and up every year, which is great. But the, like the amount of ad revenue you get per view is nowhere near as high as it was when I started out. And so that's just, a lot of content creators are struggling with this these days in that we used to be able to get a lot more funding from from ads but i think that the market is somewhat saturated so that is yeah that that is the way it is <laughs> but whenever I, I chat about like super chat and stuff i feel like um you know one of those pbs like phonathon things but yeah, and I'll let I'll let people know when a D stash sale is coming. Um, all right. Oh, that is a sad. It's like a little. The ends of this have like a little couple cuts, but I guess that's towards the end, so it's not as big a deal. But here is, I'll I'll do a close up in a sec. I want to tie off these ends. This yarn is. Awesome. <laughs> oh dear. And uh, I hate it when the two ends end up in basically the same spot on the Nitty Naughty. That is always, oh wait, what side are you on? Yeah, that should have, oh well, maybe I'll pull that through. Yeah, so that way I can tie that further down. There we go. But here, is our, and unfortunately there's a bit of a shadow from the tripod, but here is our stripey, stripey, stripe gradient. Isn't that cool? <laughs> you have seven 64 liter tubs of yarn. Wow. I have a lot of yarn too. I have, I don't know the volume of my tubs, but I have a lot, lot, lot of yarn. Which is why I was like, I need to de-stash because I have so much yarn that there's no way I could knit with all of the yarn that I have. And then all the yarn that I've dyed, um, it's just not going to be possible. But this is so pretty.
Thank you for being patient as I take the pictures. This is just in case I take something off of a nitty naughty before um, I snap a picture. But yeah, this is this is gorgeous. All right, let's see. Let's. Okay, I think I want that one out on the nitty naughty. I am going to tie up this one, and then I think. So I love these birds and I'm really excited to unravel these birds, but I think I'm gonna, I'm more inclined to do the random, random one next. Um, you're using your commercial yarn to make blankets for a local shelter because you need more space for your hand spun. Yeah, at one point I had a rule, I think it was 2013 was gonna be the year that I could, I had to use yarns from my stash unless I had a very specific gift to make someone, but I, had to use yarns for my stash, but I could buy fiber and spin yarn for projects. Then I got, that was the year that I got pregnant. And so then all bets were off <laughs> because yeah, I was like, oh, now I need to buy yarn because I want to make these blankets and, um, and stuff. So, oh. I like making blankets. I used to, in Boston, the um, Pine Street Inn would do a knit-a-thon. And back in the day, I used to make Afghans for their knit-a-thon. Um, I mean, they, they would collect 12-inch squares, but I would actually, there's one year that I definitely did, I don't remember if I did two full Afghans. I might, yeah, I think I finished two whole Afghans one year, which was really really awesome um but you know i just can't uh do that all the time oh shoot oh i'll have the yarns at the end i think i, I took pictures of this one already right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool, cool. Um, yeah, the problem for me with doing the, making the, the Afghan knit-a-thons was that at some point I ran out of yarns that I could really use for it. And then the problem with that was really just that, um, you know, I, I, it would have, at some point it started to make more sense for me to donate money instead of the, the knit stuff, just in terms of material cost and time, just in case, just in case. But I enjoy, oops, in general knitting for, for causes. Okay. Hehe, <laughs> this was the, the crocheted like that we did and this way I can do the random random blank and then that this next blank that I unravel will probably be the last one of the day I don't know for sure but we'll see how long it takes me <laughs> I'm so glad so many of you came and joined in for a second one okay oh let's move you guys up here because so I don't want to have anyone lose their buddy okay oh I should see nope okay, I'm getting a feel for how oh, can I just talk about that DNA that was done with the guar gum food coloring and the non guar gum food coloring all right this is the, the random stamping and stenciling blank and is what I want to unravel next. Okay, where? Oh, over there. <laughs> I swear I would lose like my, my head if it were not attached to my body. Um, <laughs> oh dear. Um, actually, you know what, I think before, 
before I get started with this break blank, I will drink some water and do an, one more brief um, commercial break and then we will get started. So thanks again for everyone for hanging in while I do this. Um, the, the ads help really, really help uh, fund everything I'm doing. And even if you don't see the ad, um, you guys hanging out here with me really, really helps as well. And yeah, making my face go away is just so that way I have a, oh no, oh no, I need to press the button. There we go. Uh, having my face go away is a, uh, like the, the signal for me knowing when the replay has caught up. Someday, someday I might have, oh wait, I have the camera out. Um, oh, you finished unraveling your first blanks? That's awesome. And someday I might be able to have someone help me on these streams so then I can have someone doing that for me. When they notice I start taking the brick. Um, versus like pushing all the buttons and stuff myself. <laughs> Whew, all right, Let, let's get ready to rumble. I, I amuse myself sometimes. And again, the, I have my little camera there and I'm talking to the plastic one, but you know. All right, so this one might have some plain, a lot more plain white section. And this one is a true random pattern because we've got the stenciling, we've got stamping, some worked, some didn't. We've got all kinds of stuff in it. So it should be really, really nice. And again, I like to add the, the two ends of my yarn sort of into um, the T-junction the of the Nitty Naughty because it's just an easy, easy way to get it started versus try, tying a knot or taping it or something like that. And yeah, we've got an all white section. So depending, I don't necessarily want to over dye this because I think it'll be really cool with white and lots of colors. But you, oh, for a second I thought I heard a kid crying and there's no way there's a kid crying here because my kids are at school. So I panicked for a moment. We're good. Uh, so there's a lot of white here at the beginning before we start seeing, what is that? Sorry guys, hold on. Um, I will be right back. right back I'm gonna do a quick run in the house um, I will I will be back um, yes please hold tight if you're in the chat let other people know where I've gone Everything's fine. There's no fire. Everything, everything is fine. Whew, okay. 
Um, <laughs> <coughs> sorry. Um, I just ran around the house to check. So basically, the alarm going off was not one of the fire alarms or one of the smoke detectors. It was the, like the alarm system panel <laughs> that, yeah, it was the alarm system panel that was saying that there was like something going off. But I just checked the whole house and there's no smoke or any alarms going off anywhere. So everything, I think it was just a faulty thing, maybe like some dust or something on a sensor. But, oh, Indy, my wife, yeah, Indy's, Indy's down here like asleep in the playroom. So he's, um, yeah, I would, he's fine. <laughs> it, if you don't know, Indy's the dog, the fluffy, fluffy white dog who does not like strangers, but yeah, he, he, oh, that's a relief. <laughs> it's like, oh, well, you know, if I didn't come back, then there probably would have been something. Goodness, goodness me. Um, it's always exciting here with Rebecca from Camden. <laughs> and it's not the kids. It's my house. All right. So anyway, the first specks are starting to show up on this yarn. Um, and yeah, I think that it's going to be really cool. And so this is one of the examples I think where it'll be especially useful to have two identical 50 gram skeins of yarn because you know, there's, there's blue in different sections, but everything is overall pretty random here compared to some of the other blanks that we dyed today that were a little more consistent. Um, so I don't think we'll have much of an overall gradient going on. But I think that these, well, so part of me after I unravel this would be tempted to dip dye these skeins or to over dye it. But the problem with doing that is that then they wouldn't be identical anymore. If I wanted to dip dye this, I should have done it while it was still on the blank. Or you could do something cool. If you wanted to have something mismatched, you could dip dye into different colors and then still have these darker specks and stuff in the same pattern on them, but have the background be different. So there's a lot of things you could do to play around with the, the colors and whatnot you get from these yarns. Oh yeah, he'd bark if someone were here. No, it wasn't a security alarm that was going off. Oh no, if the mail truck drives down our street, Indy will let me know. Um, if the mailman is three houses down, Indy will let me know. So yeah, the he's um, he doesn't like strangers, but he is very very useful when it comes to security. Um, now, I mean, I don't think he would be useful if someone were actually in the house because he's not. I mean, he barks and he'll bark and bark and bark, but he's not otherwise aggressive. Ooh, -hoo, the first bits of blue are coming in. So. Uh, oh no, when you're, you're, I'm assuming Bella's a dog, she, oh, she would bark at the person, but she's afraid of the alarm, oh, he's thankfully pretty good about stuff, I think that he barks a lot because he's insecure with his place in the pack, oh gosh, but the kids, the kids love him, it's so funny, Ryder, like, shrieks, no, Indy, back, when he has a snack, because on the flip side, Ryder walks around with like his cup of Cheerios or something and he'll feed them to the dog. And so then he freak. so if he drops something, the dog will eat it thinking that the kid is giving it to him, which, you know, so then he, you know, the dog follows him when he has food. So then he gets upset. So if Ryder wakes up from nap and I'm like, oh, you want to go downstairs and get a snack? He goes, Indy back. <laughs> but it's just funny because then like anywhere else he, you know, if Indy was barking too much, so he was in it, if he's in his crate for a little bit, Ryder goes and he's like, hi, Indy. And then he's like, mommy, Indy. So then, you know, I let Indy back up and I goes, thank you, mommy. And, but Indy, um, Indy's crate is like his safe, his safe place. He, he sleeps in there, even if the, like the, the door, you know, with the door open and stuff, he will often, like, that's where he goes when he doesn't want to be messed around with and stuff. So it's cute. We'll actually also sneak up to the, we don't have a basement, we have an attic and that's where Keith's office is. And so he'll sneak up there 
and hide sometimes when he, if he doesn't, if there's like too much commotion with people or something, he'll just go up and hide <laughs> and hang out in his blank. Um, oh. Lush, they, they held that comment for review that your, your parents' dogs would lick you to death. I have approved it. Um, ah, shit. The, the dogs that get scared are shit sues. Yeah, my, I, I, oh. So Andy's an American Eskimo and he's gorgeous and he's a wonderful dog for our family, but his stranger anxiety is really difficult. It's just really hard to have new people come into our house because he just doesn't, you know, if we, if we throw a big party, we send him to doggy daycare or something. So, um, which is funny, he does a lot better in a place that's not his home with strangers. And especially if Keith and I aren't around, he gets very protective of anything he perceives as his territory. So this is the, the random patterning, patterning we're getting from unraveling this. And I think that it could knit up, you know, there's some places that could, uh, the colors might pool, but you'd get these like random, almost mini like striped sections and stuff if you were to knit with this. So I think it could look really cool. <laughs> but unraveling these stroll blanks is just so easy. Um, I think, I mean, I had an easy time. I think the, the wool of the Andes can be a bit stickier to each other. Not that it's felting, but I think that that contributes to why sometimes it's hard, a little harder to unravel. Um, but the, the stroll yarn, since it's super wash and everything, just unravels really, really nicely. <laughs> But yes, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me while I do, while I do this. It's just, it's fun. And I'm like, I think if I'm going to do another sock blank special, I would try to build some time in for unraveling into the week. Um, and I might spread things out a little more um, just because this time it's very front loaded with the dying and now I mean, I can't believe I thought that if things were dry and I had time, I would randomly pop on to do some unraveling. I wasn't fit for very much <laughs> after some of the streams. I was so exhausted, but in the best possible way. It was very um, mentally uplifting, uplifting and energizing in that way. And it has me excited to do even more dying. So... Oh, your dog got aggressive when your baby started crawling. Oh, that's hard. That's, we were, when we had Lucas, the thing we were most nervous about was whether or not Indy would accept Lucas. But there has never had, he has never had any issue with the kids. It's been great. With, I don't think with Indy, it's once he accepts a person, he will love them even if he hasn't seen them for a year and he'll quickly remember. So the, the new, the newest people that we've introduced him to lately, I mean, unless someone's staying here, we don't really even bother anymore because it's not worth the stress to Indy and to us. But with, um, our good friends, they, they came with their kids and the friends knew him well. And normally we, we don't have him around kids, but they like one of the dads, uh, went with Keith and Indy when they drove him to Massachusetts together. So, you know, there's a lot, um, there, there's just a lot of, there was a lot of trust there with the dog, um, already. And he had no issue with their kids. So I wonder if kids are in a different category, but I'm just, you know, with the neighbor, the neighborhood kids, it's just not necessarily worth it. Um, yeah, this is really pretty. Ooh, you're applying your wool and he's roving. Yay. Oh yeah. So the video description for this live stream contains links to, gosh, a whole host of stuff. Um, so I've got links to both the Singer and Loops and Threads knitting machines that I use to make some of the homemade blanks. Um, the, a link to the, my affiliate link for the Stroll Knit Blanks, um, which you can buy from Knit Picks. I mean, also just in general, Knit Picks Bear Yarns because if you want to make your own. And what I like about Knit Picks and the reason why I use them almost exclusively before I even became an affiliate last October is that you can buy individual skeins of bear yarn. You're not limited to multi-packs, but you can also buy multi-packs 
um, so you can get a bulk discount on some of the bear yarns. And I liked that. And I'd also been using their yarns for a lot of my designs and other projects anyway. So being able to get bear yarns in a yarn line I already enjoyed was really nice and kind of fun. Um, there's also what I have the, the Wilton Colorite system, which I don't know if there's still the coupon, but it's been on sale on Amazon, so that's cool. Um, and I guess I have the Miso Spray bottle in there. Yeah, because those were some of the things, I guess in this afternoon's stream, I haven't done any of the spray bottles, but um, you just made your first pom-pom. Woohoo! So, um, wait, with your cover. I guess I missed what you have, but yeah, um, pom pom makers can be can be really nice. There was one, uh, maybe it was a loops and thread knitting machine that came with some, came with a big circle that looked like it would be kind of nice for a pom pom maker. But yeah, this is unraveling really easily, and it's funny because since this one is all one color throughout, it's not really a gradient per se, but it's really this one's really random. Um, you know, I could have done the stenciling with different colors, but I really wanted to try these techniques on one piece of fabric side by side to get a nice sense of how they worked. So, yeah, I think that this would knit up really nicely. Yeah, I've had this thing for 10 years and if you know you've never used it, that's hilarious. Um, oh gosh, I, I probably have some things that I've had for a long time. Chemnitz is approaching, um, actually, now I'm curious. So I started Chemnitz, I don't know if I just turned, I can't remember if I just turned. So at New Year's week, Chemnitz turned, Chemnitz is going to turn 10 this December, just before New Year's. Um, I started it at a, oh my, uh, I don't want to see emails right now. Um, I started Chemnitz. It was, for some reason, I don't remember if that year I went skiing one day and then I didn't want to go the next day or something, but it was a ski weekend. We were with a bunch of friends for New Year's and I wasn't going to go. I was just hang back and, you know, take care of some things. And I was researching some patterns and I was like, oh, I wish that there was a list of this somewhere online and I was like well maybe I should start a blog and make a list of it and so I did and the rest I guess is history but yeah so this is we're in our night Chemnitz is nine years old so yeah I guess there could be some tools that I have that I haven't used like I have um, a tatting a set of tatting tatting for lace tatting which I haven't really tried yet I have the the tools and I have a book. Let's see, I got that at least four years ago and haven't used it yet. Whoops. <laughs> this yarn is your favorite so far? Oh, awesome. Well, the one I'm really excited to unravel, but I, the reason why I haven't unraveled it already is because I haven't finished the recap from that live stream yet. Um, but it's when I did the gradient of hand-painted speckles. Um, I'm really excited to unravel that one. Um, that's one that probably will become part of my personal collection versus something that would go in a de-stash sale. But yeah, I mean, the nice thing about the double-stranded blank, again, is that this is completely random. There'll be big white patches and whatever's made out of this. But you can get two things that are this random, or you can make a symmetrical thing that's this random. So, um, otherwise, like a lot of my, when, like when I dip dye with Wilton's Violet, I get these really regular, you know, things are very similar and I can do two things in the same pot. So they're even technically the same dye lot, but I don't keep it in like a, oh, these are the same dye lot way because there's still differences between them. They're not identical. The, the size of the different colors isn't necessarily identical, even when they really were done in the exact same dye pot at the same time. So, but doing, using these blanks, you can get that. So that's really, really fun. Um, but it's been great to 
and especially like with the Kickstarter and then all of you who have given like giving contributed super chat money today in the earlier stream in this one like all the all these contributions help because I can buy more materials and then I feel less guilty about using like a hundred dollars worth of materials in one video whereas you know when I started off I was dying mini skeins um, in some of the really old, old Chemnitz archive videos, I was doing mostly mini skeins just because of the, the cost of yarn. And it didn't, I couldn't really justify doing a whole skein of yarn in a video. And now sometimes I do multiple skeins of yarn and it's really fun. And that part of that started because I needed to dye enough yarn for the Kickstarter rewards. But then I really like doing side-by-side -side comparisons with the same technique using different fiber types. And so it's just fun. <laughs> but I do know before I do a de stash sale, I do want to make um, like a collection of some dip dyed, probably black and violet colors. Um, but I'm waiting for Stroll to come in stock. Hopefully, sometime next week, they'll come back in stock and then I can order a couple bags. So, but I am kicking myself that. You know, I don't get commissions on my own purchases or anything, but I am kicking myself that I did not become a Knit Picks affiliate sooner because I don't know how many hundreds and hundreds of links I had to their website from my blog um, and from like my YouTube videos before I became an official like affiliate and then could earn commissions on the sales. So I think that that's really funny. But it means that I am, with that brand in particular, I can honestly stand by my recommendations because it's what I choose to use. Um, I do want to branch out a little bit and test some yarn bases from some other companies, um, even ones where I wouldn't get commission or anything from like, promoting them. Um, a knit crate in there. I'm blanking on what their website is where they, oh, Dyer Supplier. Um, they, they sell bare yarns there um, because if the indie dyers who dye yarn for Knit Crate can get yarn support from them to use their yarn bases, which is a, like a really kind of awesome thing. Now, I don't dye enough stuff that I would ever try to be an indie dyer for Knit Crate or anything, but they have um, one of their sock yarns is this cool, like it's a twist of like a pale color and a dark color in the sock yarn. And so I'm like, ooh, I want to play with that. So, yep, yep, yep. Oh man. So yeah, I think even though I feel like I could unravel more and I definitely have many more blanks that need unraveling, um, I think that I'm going to have to stop with after this one. But we've done almost half of all the blanks that we dyed from the sock link specials. So that's awesome. If there's not a snow day, then I'll try. I mean, I should know by the morning whether or not we're gonna end up with a snow day. And so then I might try to do another one tomorrow. And if my March knit crate arrives tonight, I will come on after the kids are in bed with a live stream to share that. Um, because I don't think I'd be able to wait. Like I have a knit picks order as well, but that, is something that I can wait a couple days before I open the the knit crate. I don't know what color yarn I'm gonna have, so I really, really want to know. So, <laughs> all right. So this was a more completely random one. And overall, except for the ends, there's not a lot of huge patches of white. Now, when you knit with it, you will get some huge patches of white just because that's the, the nature of it. Um, you know, you will get some, you know, there will be, the white will absolutely pool in probably whatever you make because there's more white or at least as much white as there is color. But there aren't going to necessarily be big, big, big stripes of white. So let me see. There's like two stripes of the, the violet, but I mean, the best part of this is that we've got a matched, a matched set. So 
um, that is the the best the best part. And I do like how a lot of this violet remained unbroken, but then we've got these sections oops, of the the broken violet as well. So I think that it's a really nice sort of mixture. Whew. All right, let me pull up my little camera. <laughs> so, and then I will make it bigger. There we go. So we can still see some of the yarns that we did. So yeah, we dyed a bunch of, or we dyed. I didn't dye anything today. I want to dye some more yarn. Um, I just need, need some time. <laughs> but I do want to, so the next thing, I have so many projects that I want to dye. I have, I've prepped like some hand wound balls, some yarn cakes that I have like specific projects earmarked for them. I just need, I want to film, because I filmed probably through episode 39 of Dye Pop Weekly, but I skipped 35 because for episode 35 of Dye Pop Weekly, I want to, um, that's the last one that's really been funded by the Kickstarter. I, I want to recreate the first hand painted yarn that I ever did. And I have the same wool acrylic base, but I think I'm also, and you know, it's a mixture of a lot of food coloring and, um, and liquid drops. And I want to hand paint the, the same colorway that I did. And so it's sort of a, a nice throwback. So I think that it'll be a lot of fun. Oh, well, thank you. Although I guess the one thing that could be different is the size of the skein. Um, I think I wound the skein the first time around the back of a chair and this time I'd probably do my knitting on it. So, but the colors, the colors will be mixed the same way and painted in approximately the same order as best as I can follow my instructions from my website. <laughs> so this is why it's fun to either film or write out everything you're doing when you're dyeing yarn is that then you can go and recreate it as needed. So it's a reason to keep a dyer's notebook or as one of you said, to keep a diary. <laughs> I do, so that's awesome. I'm, I mean, with the Kenneth aspect, it's still like always my lab notebook, but I love the idea of having a diary. <laughs> Sorry, I get, I get amused. <laughs> oh, goodness, goodness, goodness me. Um, yeah, do you guys have any other questions? At some point, I probably need to go back through and like trim the beginning of the live streams, especially when I had a muting, a muting issue this morning and, and stuff like that. But I, I appreciate all of you who tuned in to watch me unravel these, uh, what I think I did four, one, two, yeah, I did four, I unraveled four blanks just now. And these were all blanks that were dyed last week in the sock blank special too. And so the best way to go and find about the dyeing of any of these blanks is check out the, um, there's recaps from each of these live streams that are, except, well, of all the blanks we saw today, the recaps of the, of the dyeing videos are all up. And so on the thumbnail, thumbnail of each of those videos is a picture of all the blanks sort of in one spot. And so that can help you figure out which live stream, which, which blank came from. So then you can go and check it out. Oh, you started your journal that you started your dying journal last week dying along with me. Woohoo! Yay! I love it. I love it. Love it. You have a recipe box. Oh, this is, you guys are all awesome. I, 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 you know, you asked me my inspiration, but really you guys inspire me. And I see like, when I see in the, the chemist lab group on Facebook, all of these, these different projects and stuff that you guys are doing, um, it's like, ooh, I need to try that too. And so it's just a lot, a lot of fun. Thank you. And, oh, let's see that. Nope, that's not the right link. How many skeins do you think you will de-stash? A lot. Um, oh, gosh, I probably have at least 60 at this point. Um, so... Uh, I think that's probably the mailman coming. Um, but I did want to share something with all of you. I mentioned this in the last live stream, and I don't know if it'll let me add this link to the chat. Um, but I'm going to try to do this. Craft C. 
to unlimited. So you can try out Crafty Unlimited for two weeks for just $1 right now. This is a special deal that is going on um, today, going on through tomorrow, I believe. I'm not sure what time tomorrow it'll end, but you can do a trial of Crafty Unlimited for two weeks for $1. I believe that you would probably, if you wanted to just do it for those two weeks, you would need to cancel before the end, before you started getting charged for either the monthly or the um, annual subscription. But um it is yeah I, I think that it's a nice way to take advantage of some classes from someone beyond, beyond me um i mean yes i i you know I, I might be good for many ways but there are certainly things that i could learn and so i don't have i'd like to take advantage of the crafty author this crafty author myself but i don't have the time to watch a bunch of classes right now otherwise i would totally try it out um so if you've done any dyeing classes and knitting quilting classes that you recommend i would love to hear about it um because then i can sort of like save the future stuff that i i want to try out but i think that it's just a nice opportunity and i am an affiliate um or an influencer i suppose and so they uh sent me the message with this deal and so that seemed pretty pretty awesome but yeah there'll be we got lots of yarn and lots of yarn coming up in, in D stash sales. And so, yeah, we'll see how everything, how everything goes. But I do think I do plan to, and it might be, uh, I might offer, not do it in advance, but I might offer some dip dyed yarns dyed to order um, as a, like, not made yet. Um, but for, that's something I might offer because those I can do, I can do a bunch pretty quickly. Um, compared to some of these other techniques, which are more labor intensive. So uh, anyway, uh, thank you so much for joining me for the live streams today. I had a lot of fun hanging out and unraveling, and I really appreciate all of your support from the Super Chats this today, uh, last week. I mean, that all like really, really helped um, make it so that way that one of these really big dying weeks is something that I want to do again in the future. Um, oh, well, thank you. Yeah, thank you for all the support um, from the bottom of my heart. Like, I, I really, really, really appreciate it. Um, and yeah, you guys helped make all this awesome. And I look forward, stay tuned, um, because I might come on tonight if I get uh, my knit crate. Otherwise, uh, weather pending, I might be on tomorrow to do some more unraveling. So, I'll let you know like on Facebook and um, my Facebook usually posts to Twitter and stuff as well. So yeah, I hope to see you all soon. Yay. And now I'm going to go soak a bunch of these to try to relax the crimps. So anyway, have a wonderful afternoon. I will chat with you guys later. Um, bye everyone. <laughs>